Deep in the mountains, buried in the new leaf snow, four cats lived within a mountainside cavern. The leader, a long-haired, mackerel-spotted tabby she-cat with a bobbed tail, would sit in the entrance of the cavern they lived in. There would come a sigh of displeasure to the leader's left, causing her to turn her head and see the medicine cat coming from the darkness like a shadow. The medicine cat's green eyes catching the sunlight and lighting up. Has the patrol returned? They're just getting back, King Star replied, looking back out towards the bright snow-covered ground that was their territory. Not much to catch today. The dark pelted medicine cat would settle next to her. I'm not surprised with that red stain walking around in this bright landscape. Of course, everything will run away. Kingstar would cut her gaze at the medicine cat, who would turn away to ignore her leader's gaze. But see, Volnettle couldn't be happier to take him out to a hunt alone. She has been drooling over him since we picked him up. Kingstar rolled her eyes at the medicine cat's sharp tongue. If you wanted Fire Sayer, you should have jumped on him, Dustbriar. I'm only one medicine cat. I cannot have a mate until there are more medicine cats. Dustbriar retorted shortly. She'd huff and get her paws, feeling agitated. I'm just angry at not having any message from StarClan. It's been five moons and there's been nothing! Her deputy, the only Tom within the clan, an orange long-haired tabby that was being followed by the only warrior within the clan, a long-haired bingle tabby she-cat. They would trudge through the deep snow, carrying little prey. Apparently the deputy had overheard that. It's okay, Dustbriar. We know you're trying to do your job as best as you can, the large Tom would say, stepping past the messing cat. It'll be okay. Thus, Briar would frown and remain as she was, while the cats stepped around her as they entered the cavern mouth. She'd narrow her eyes as the Tom Firesayer passed by. I stopped hearing from StarClan the moment he joined us. Firesayer whirled around with fur rising. You're starting that again? I don't even know who this StarClan is, and you think I had something to do with these cats not contacting you? A Volnettle would turn around at the two having their spat that the medicine cat had started, but Kingstar moved to stand between them. She'd flick a tail towards the tom to, dis to dismiss him. Forgive and forget, please. Fire Sayer huffed, rolling his eyes, and trudged after the warrior. What's with her? I didn't do anything, Volnettle. It'll be alright. She's just recently lost her mother. It's been hard on all of us. Volnettle replied softly as she didn't lead the way to the fresh kill pile. Like King Star said, forgive and forget. Easy for you to say, but won't she follow that too? Fire Sayer hissed. Dust Briar is quite a stubborn she cat, Vol Briar explained. She's been like that since she was a kid. The two cats would head out of earshot. Dust Briar would know what was about to be said to her by King Star. He's new and he's learning. Yes, his pelt stands out, but he's huntingly better in other areas of the landscape. You must be nicer to him. She looked her leader riled up. I'm serious, King Star. Since he showed up, there's been nothing but silence. This has never happened before. They also went silent after your mother passed away, King Star pointed out for the seventh time to the young medicine cat. We must be patient for their word. You know that. Just because she died doesn't mean StarClan has silenced themselves. We were still getting messages from them until he showed up, Dustbriar countered heatedly. I know I'm onto something, Geekstar. We weren't supposed to take in an outside blood. There is no one left but us, Geekstar explained, staring at the medicine cat gently. She'd sigh, taking in a calm demeanor, and step past the medicine cat. Come on, let's walk to the crystals. Surely they'll show us something. I'm not very good at being a seer, Dustbriar reminded sourly as she'd followed Ali reluctantly. You know this. It's all we got left, though. It's worth a try, Kingstar said, trudging through the snow following a covered trail. 
Thus, Briar, your mother would be scolding you on how you treated that poor Tom, wouldn't she? That was how mother was, the medicine cat said, not purposely agreeing with her. She saw a friend and a strength in every cat she met. I can't do that. She once told me that it takes years of practice to see the good in another cat. You'll get there one day, Dustbriar. I believe in you, Kingstar replied sincerely as she walked its icy trail. God, guys okay so i literally did the machinima in the main world uh and i had it on we started at the very early early morning and now it is 8 47 p.m on the very first day and dust briar here keeps trying to run the fuck away <laughs> she keeps trying to run away she really wants to run away because she, like, in the very beginning of all this, the very, very, very beginning of all this, she jumped on Fire Saver and, Fire Saver and lost the fight and just laid there very embarrassedly, embarrassedly, and uh, wouldn't look at anyone, just, just laid there in the snow under a bush the entire time. And so I was like, all right, you know, Whatever you you deserve that, you really did. And in the in the whole like RP, we've got her being she's she's really hateful towards Fire's air. And oh goodness, I scared my dog. I'm sorry. I'm sorry, City. Are you okay? So, anyways, I have spent. Over two and a half hours, or three, making that entire machinima. The entire entrance of the roleplay. Oh my god. Uh, this is, this takes a lot. This really does take a lot of recording, take a lot of editing. And it just really takes a ton of work. Uh, sometimes I choose not to do them, and sometimes I do. You know, depending on what's going on, what I want to convey, what I'm trying to explain, what I want the, the viewers to see, what the viewers to learn, to know, stuff like that. I will say that these cats were very easy to work with, surprisingly. Uh, they just really relaxed and laid there or sat there and just stared at absolutely nothing. Which is, like, the best thing you could ever ask for. But, you know, that, that's that. So anyways, um, that is basically what you do during a machinima. Also, there is a lovely bunch of surprises about to happen! Yay! Yay! Yeah, you have a good reason for being so happy, honestly. You do. And so does, um... Okay, fine. Fine, Dust. Fine. Just, just go. Just go, Dust. Just go. Go. Get out of here. No one wants you. I mean, I'm just, I'm really sad that what's happened to Dustbriar. I, she's, she's really trying to find herself out there. Um, and I think that this is going to be playing a part in the roleplay as well with her going like this. With her missing. Usually I do that with some of my roleplays. I will have them do the whole, like, if they go, uh, go missing, I will say, you know, they they just left to go find themselves, and I think this is what she's doing. She's really trying to go find herself. She really misses her mother. Her mother did a lot of things for her, and, um, she wishes it was different. She really does. Oh my god. Vol! What are you doing? <laughs> Vol! There's Kingstar. Kingstar is like, okay, well, she's gone. So what now I'm going to do is I'm going to go and 
uh, absolutely destroy some stuff, destroy some places, with, you know. Mm. I hope y'all, uh, I hope y'all enjoyed watching me work on this series and how things are coming along for the beginning, the ending, things like that, how I'm showing you the cats, how y'all are learning about them, things like that. And let us be serenaded by beautiful Volstar, or Vol... Volnettle. Wow! <laughs> Maybe that's a future thing there! <laughs> Alright, anyways, I gotta go get some more stuff done. I will see y'all later. Until next time. Bye, guys!